beginning of the next section, but I think I'm going to go ahead and move along. Rabbit diet is where almost everyone makes mistakes with their first bunnies. More than half of people who have their first rabbit are going to end up injuring their rabbit through mistakes that they made. And it's just, with rabbits, it's what you don't know that hurts them. Rabbits are fragile in so many ways. And diet is the thing I think we tend to all mess up the most because rabbits get so excited about food. They go bonkers when it's time for food, especially <laughs> anything that has any kind of calories whatsoever. Rabbits are like two-year-olds. They will opt for the highest calorie food. If you're given a choice between banana and hay, it's going to be banana every time. If you're given a choice between a cookie and you know an hay cube, it's going to be a cookie every time. It's always the high calorie foods. And so uh, people, they, they see how happy their rabbit is, gets when they give them a piece of carrot. And they go, oh, I love that feeling. And it makes us feel good because it makes us feel like we're loving our pets, but we love them to death. And I'm not going to, I'd be the last person to judge anyone for this. I have hurt more of my own bunnies by making this mistake. This is, matter of fact, the reason why I came here and give these talks is because I have made all these mistakes. I have done all these things, so I know there are hundreds of other folks out here doing the same thing. And it's not because they're mean or they don't love their bunnies. It's ignorance, and it's the way bunnies are, how excited they get, and they start doing all the things that they do. But I'm here to tell you that if you don't pay attention now, you will get this message down the road because you're going to end up in the vet office and those expensive seven, $800 vet bills that I'm telling you about, this is how you can avoid them the easiest. The most preventative thing you can do to avoid vet bills is diet for your rabbit. And uh, I'm going to go into it by saying that most of your rabbit's diet is grass hay, not pellets. If you've got a rabbit who's getting more than a small amount of pellets per day, uh, he's headed for trouble. Pellets were designed for farmers to get rabbits fat so you could eat them in six months. They were not designed for an animal who was going to live 10 or 15 years. Many, many rabbit folks don't give pellets at all. Vets even tend to tell folks to give too many pellets. My uh, Dr. Cecil will tell you a quarter to a half a cup of pellets a day. I think that's way too many pellets for most rabbits, especially one like this. This is a Rex rabbit. Rex rabbits should, in my opinion, should never have pellets. Rex bunnies were made were bred to gain weight quickly. What uh, the, the point of the Rex breed was to get a quickly maturing rabbit to you could bring it to market quicker. Well, the, the downside of that is that Rex rabbits look at food and gain weight. And these type of bunnies, where you can always tell a Rex rabbit because of their fur, they've got special fur, and look at the whiskers on this little girl. They're not kitty whiskers, they're not the ones that stick out really long like a kitty, they're curly feet like a pig's tail. See how they kind of curl around? That's Rex, I touch it. They're bred for their fur as well, but if you look, this bunny will gain weight just looking at food. They should never have, they should never have um, uh, any any amount of pellets. I tell folks don't even give them pellets. Really, have, have you seen a Rex before? No. Look at her whiskers. That's how you tell a Rex. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she might. Yeah, she's probably telling me to put me down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Daddy, I'm kind of nice thing about rabbit is it's very clean, it's, yeah. it's sterile. There's no harm in, in touching it. There's no bacteria, there's no disease. Rabbits don't have any diseases that can give humans. The only thing rabbits can transfer to a human is ringworm, which is not even a virus or disease, it's a fungus. Um, most diseases are species specific, so any kind of flu or cold or uh, thing that would make a rabbit sick would not affect us, so there's no fear. Um, now, I don't handle the secret trout I don't know if you know, but rabbits eat all their food twice. They literally will eat their hay, and then it goes through them, and they will eat it right from their butt, and it will go through again, and after the food has been through them two times, it comes out as these little round pellets. The first time through, it is uh, a soft, mushy, 
very sticky. Um, you don't want to pick it up with your fingers. Uh, it looks like a little bunch of grapes. And uh, your rabbit should be eating those. If he's not eating them, it's because he's most likely getting too much nutrition. Now, they get accidents. Once in a while, if you find those, those sticky trips laying around, you know, once or twice a month, not a good deal. That was an accident. But if you're finding those every day, this is because your rabbit doesn't feel compelled to eat them. And the reason he's not feeling compelled to eat them is he's getting too much nutrition. This is the first sign that you have a problem with your diet of your rabbit, is finding seed trips laying around all the time. You should, like I said, very once in a while, maybe once a month, we can excuse that. But if you're finding them two or three or four times a week, you may want to start looking at your rabbit's diet. Now, when you look at a bunny, a bunny, if you're looking at it from the side, you want to make sure that that your rabbit needs to have air under here. Hey, if that if your bunny is standing sideways <laughs> like that and you can't see air under there, he needs a diet. Another way you can tell is you feel along your rabbit's backbone, two fingers along the back of the spine. You should be able to run down there and feel ribs. Bump, 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 bump. You can't feel those ribs. He needs a diet. Now, I'm telling you, more than half of my friends' rabbits out there all need to go on a diet. I tell them all the time, they go, oh, you know, I love him. You know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't forgive me if I didn't give him the streets. I keep saying, okay, you know, I'll see you at the vet's office. Because overweight rabbits end up at the vet's office all the time. Part of the reason why we have to monitor our rabbit's diet so closely is that rabbits cannot grow up fur balls like a cat can. They bathe all day like cats do. That fur that they're licking is going down their throat. They, they have a sphincter muscle in their uh, uh, esophagus. Uh, it's called a cardiac sphincter. And it will not allow them to throw up. Rabbits cannot vomit in any way, shape, or form. If you ever see a rabbit vomit, you better rush into the vet and he's dying. Rabbits cannot vomit. So they get fur balls all the time, just like cats do. But it has to go off the other end. So when you have what we call low motility, where a rabbit eats too many calories, it slows the speed at which things move through their gut. If you're getting a low calorie, high fiber diet, things got to move really fast to them to get enough nutrition to keep your, your metabolism up at the speed that you require. Rabbits have a high metabolism. So they need a lot of energy going through so they eat massive quantities of hay and grass to get the calories that they need to, to be a high energy animal. But if they get high calorie foods, that motility or the speed of their gut slows down. It makes them a sitting duck for obstructions. And fur obstructions are incredibly common in rabbits and I have to tell you that 90% of all obstruction surgeries go south. You do not want a vet trying to convince you to let him go digging around inside your bunny's gut to pull out of the fur bone. Your rabbit is going to die. 90% of those surgeries, the rabbit never wakes up. So I'm telling you, I've been down this road, I've had it happen to me. It's all about the diet. So 85% of your rabbit's diet needs to be grass haze. People tell me all the time, my rabbit won't eat hay, he won't eat hay. Start removing the high calorie foods and he will be compelled to eat hay. They have to eat. Now, the, the high calorie foods, number one high calorie food, pellets. If your rabbit is getting a lot of pellets, start pulling back on pellets. All right, I have a 10 pound girl and a six pound boy. They live together, they share, um, what is that, about two tablespoons of pellets. Now they get a green salad each day as well. That's their breakfast. I get up in the morning, first day, they're waiting for their pellets. They're dancing, they're doing all that. I call it bunny crack because they, they are addicted to pellets and, and the rabbits who get pellets for too long, they won't go to hay. It's very difficult to wean them off the pellets because rabbits are lazy. They want the high calorie foods. They don't want to sit there all day like a cow chewing their cud, chewing all this 
pain that they have to chew it. They're lazy. So they want the easy fix to feed themselves and feel full and happy. So they want the high calorie foods. So hay is the, what they need the most. If they're not eating the hay, start backing off on other stuff. Now, it's counterintuitive, but rabbits can get too much salad. It doesn't make sense to us. We think, okay, as humans, the more salad we eat, the healthier humans we are. Oh my God, so therefore, if I get a massive salad to my rabbit, he should even be healthier than if he gets a little salad. But that's, that's counterintuitive because it, it, it's not the way it is. Rabbits can get too much salad. They can get too much nutrition very easily. Rabbits should have twice the size of their head in a salad per day. Mixture of four or five different uh, breeds. Uh, maybe a little cilantro, maybe a little parsley, some romaine lettuce, maybe a couple of slices of, of celery, some uh, carrot greens, <coughs> or some basil. They love herbs, they love all, anything green. Um, but twice the size of his head. So this one here, head's about like that. So maybe a bowl of salad about like that per day. Now if you're getting it twice a day, cut that in half. Um, but you gotta remember, all these calories add up. Okay, a little, just a little bit too much salad, and then oh, a little bit too much pellets, and then day after day after day, this stuff adds up, and it, and over the years, it takes its toll on the rabbit. Rabbits don't store excess calories in a fatty adipose layer like humans do. They don't have a fat layer like humans. They store it in their livers for a fight, flight or fright type reactions. So when we have to make a burst and run a football field, we're drawing instant sugar and instant energy out of our livers. The same thing that rabbits do. When rabbits have to bolt across the field, they're getting that energy from their livers. So where does their body store excess energy? In their livers. They get a fatty liver disease. And as rabbits get fatty livers, if they have 50% fatty liver, they lose 50% of their liver function. Eventually, as their livers get fattier and fattier and fattier, they just, they will die because they don't have enough liver function to support their body. And there's no reversing that. You're not going to go in and go, oh, my body stopped eating. He's very sick. You take him into the vet. And it's just very slow death. I literally, my last money passed away that way. That's why I'm nervous. And I loved her to death. I, that's why I'm here today. I, I, I could, I, I still cry over me causing her to go, to leave. And it's going to be hard for you to, 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 to equate what the right level of, of nutrition for your rabbit is. But trust me when I say less is more. Push the hay. And if they don't like the hay, find hay that you like. Uh, a lot of the bunnies don't like the Pecto or the PetSmart hay. They're dry, they're old, they've been in that bag for six months. They have some really nice hay in the teeth here. Uh, the House Rabbit Society sells some really nice hay. Uh, I was part of a group for the last four years that uh, every two weeks we pick up uh, 1,500 pounds of hay and we break it down into boxes and sell it at four or five different outlets around the county. And people will go get it because there's several different kinds of hay in the box, which is provides a variety for the rabbit. Plus, it's never been out of the bale more than two weeks, so it's always fresh. And it's like $12 a box. I think they get $12 for their hay in there. And, and it's about a month's worth of hay. Now, I don't know if that would have there will last a while. Uh, when we come back, I am going to uh, show you how to set up a litter box. Let's see if it, uh, okay, so I'm not. Pardon? I have a question about hay. Okay. So when you give your bun hay, and some of it kind of is at the bottom and, and he's not very interested, do you need to take that away or can you leave that and keep putting I fresh take away. Pot? When you put hay out there and it's been there 24 hours and your rabbit hasn't eaten it, you don't want it. Okay. I mean, they're very selective eaters and it's called selective foraging. When they're wild, they're out there, they're eating a little of this, a little of that, and they're very picky about what they eat. And rabbits will go through, when you watch them go through their, their manger or their litter box, they're picking out all the parts they want, and they're digging, and they're digging, and, they're getting, and, and by the 24 hours, they've gotten all that they want. Now, some bunnies are smaller, and, and, and I've heard of folks changing their litter boxes every two days, but uh, we do ours every day, they get fresh hay every day, and my rabbits are all uh, big hay eaters. And that's good, it's a blessing, because I'm trying to keep them out of the vet that way. Um, 
The types of hay that you want to give your rabbit are Timothy hay, which is the optimal. Orchard grass or oat hay is also okay for the rabbit. You want to watch with the oat hay, the oat tops. That's like oatmeal, it's a little fattening, there's a little bit of extra fat and protein in there that's a little bit more than your rabbit. But mine did for those tops. So I, I, we actually buy oat hay for our rabbits and my wife will put like just a handful on top of their litter box each day. And they will dig for those little oat tops. Every single one will think they want those. But uh, we make sure they don't get too many. I mean, if they were just eating those, they would get chubby. Uh, not alfalfa. Now, alfalfa is good for very young rabbits and, and very old rabbits keeping weight on them. So if you have a juvenile rabbit that's up to about six months old, we're giving them alfalfa, then we're weaning them off of that after about six months old. Then if you have a bunny who's, say, nine, ten years old, Sometimes we have trouble keeping way on them at that age. Sometimes your vet will, will prescribe alfalfa for you at that point to put weight back on the body. But I would never do that unless the vet told you to do that and said, you know, your body's losing weight. Uh, Timothy, you know, Timothy pellets are what we do uh, recommend. Yeah, there is some alfalfa in most pellets, but you want to read the pellets. If you're buying pellets for your rabbit, make sure it says adult rabbit food, not juvenile rabbit food. Juvenile or young rabbit food has more alfalfa in it, and that's going to be too much protein and fat for an adult rabbit. Um, okay, you know, give it a choice. I've been talking about this already. Give it a choice between pellets and hay. That's a no-brainer. The bunnies are going to take the pellets. And then give it a choice between pellets and fruit. They're going to take the fruit. Always, they're always going to take the most uh, uh, high uh, caloric food. All right, let's see. We talk about cecotropes. Talk about limiting the salad. Does anybody have any questions about uh, salad? I will tell you, beware of uh, sulfur uh, uh, laden vegetables. Uh, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage can cause gas in rabbits, and gas can be very painful for them. Uh, I keep big gas drops around. I'm not going to get into a lot of medical things with rabbits, but a quick way to help them get past that is, is better off not even getting them in that condition. Are radishes okay, or is that too gassy? Uh, I've not ever seen one that will eat them. So oh, mine does. Does he? Yeah. Radish tops, yeah. No, the whole radish. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah um, if I were, I had a question on a vegetable, I go to either rabbit.org or the San Diego uh, rabbits.org, and they have lists of, of good, uh, healthy vegetables. And um, I'm pretty certain the radishes are okay. But you gotta watch because some of those are also very nutritious. So things like green beans are no good because too much too uh, high calorie. Yeah, too much nutrition in them. Uh, they will give, like some people will give green peppers or red peppers to their bunny. But again, nutritious food, so very limited quality, quantities. And, and again, that can be gassy as well. So when you're trying to do vegetable out on your rabbit, small amount, one day, and then wait a day or two to see if he reacts. If your rabbit doesn't want to eat the next morning, he's got a tummy ache. And this is how you tell your rabbit has a tummy ache. It's like you come back the next day and he's got. Uh, uh, he hasn't touched his food, and now you're going, oh, gee, my bunny likes uh, uh, parsley. I'll give him a piece of parsley. He turns the parsley down. He's got a tummy ache from whatever it was you introduced to do. And you need to take the time to do this because it's not a given. Some bunnies react to just everyday vegetables that other bunnies don't react to. Uh, I've had rabbits who were allergic to parsley or, or cilantro or or celery, or different types of really common vegetables. Usually, very rarely have they reacted to romaine or celery. Romaine and celery are, are mostly water, and you can give them quite a bit of that, and it's not going to do it. That's why it's that food. We eat celery, we eat romaine lettuce because there's no calories or anything in it. The other thing you've got to watch with those is actually they can get too much water, and they'll give them a little bit of uh, uh, run poop as well, a little bit too much water. But again, moderation is you know, the sweet corn has too much calories, you know, even though they love it. But what do you think about the husk of the corn? The, like the silk. The silk, silk and no, but also the green. The green part? Green part. I've never given them the green part. I've given them the silk. They go crazy.
crazy for it, but we never feed our rabbits any corn, peas, beans, nuts, seeds. Those are all too fatty and too much protein for a rabbit. Do you think uh, the husk is okay? Pardon? Do you think the husk is okay? I think it's okay because it's mostly a fiber. Uh -huh. um, I mean, only a rabbit would like it. Because oh, it, it is. It's delicious. Yeah, only a rabbit would like that. I mean, it would appeal to us, but yeah. yeah, they like that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I think that would be that would be fine. Uh, I have given mine to soak before, but I've never the brown part. It also, the giving vegetables, okay, never any mushy parts. If you run into like black or slimy or red, we throw the. I mean, I see some people, that's the part they give their rabbits. It's like, okay, I will eat that, I'll give it to the bunny. Bad. Uh, rabbits can get uh, sick from that stuff. And their uh, digestive systems are big. Are anybody, I don't know if you've ever brewed beer or wine, made wine, but they're fermenters. Rabbits are fermenters. They ferment all their food. So when you make beer, whatever you throw in is what you get out the other side. It's, it, it affects the whole process. So. With rabbits, it's a delicate fermentation system, and they're constantly throwing new material in. It's bubbling, and they make a, rabbits make a lot of gas, a lot of gas, and it has to be released. And 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 if they produce too much gas, they get tummies. And so this is where if you upset their balance in their tummy with something that they're not used to, it can be very painful for them. And I am also adamant about fruit. I have done uh, experiments with my bunnies. I no longer will give my rabbits any kind of fruit whatsoever because I've discovered from trial and error that the sugar in the fruit changes the chemistry of their guts. And the way I learned this was I took my rabbits completely off of fruit for about three months, all four of them, never, never a piece of fruit. And I had some extra watermelon laying around one day and they loved watermelon when I used to give them fruit. But, oh, it won't hurt one day. And I gave them each a little tiny, just a one inch cube of watermelon. They ate it, no problem. The next day, every one of my rabbits didn't want a salad, didn't want a cookie, didn't want any of the treats that I normally would give them. They all had tummy aches. Every one of them. Now, the only thing that was different was the fruit. And what this tells you is that, and this repeated actually about six months later. I don't know why. I, I'm, a, I'm a slow learner, I guess. I, my wife had some candle open in the fridge, and I thought the bunnies not the, the bunnies are like begging, and, and you gotta know the bunnies are the best bangers on the planet. They sit up in front of you and beg and they do all you know they'll pose, all right, cute, they'll do their poses and they're begging from you, and we would give in to them the next day all of my rabbits were sick again with the candle. So I don't give them fruit at all anymore because what it's taught me is that sugar changes the whole chemistry inside their gut. And so if your rabbit is eating fruit and not getting sick, that's because he's getting it every day. And he's, he's basically he's getting it all the time. You, it, I call it the treat truck. You, know, you don't want to fall in there because your bunnies, they're going to beg from you for whatever it is that they like the most. They're going to be 20 times a day in front of you going, hey, Dad, hey, Mom, all right, dude. You know, isn't it time for a, a treat? You know, and, 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 and they just beg and beg and beg all they love anyway. Okay, I, you know, you turn them down several times, but then, you know, you give in, and then you give in, and then you give in, and next thing you know, they're, they got you wrapped around their little finger, you know. Those guys know how to push our buttons. That's for sure. That's what, why I know rabbits are very smart, because they figure out very quickly, okay, I do this, I get this reaction. So they figure out, if I do this and get a treat, they're going to sit in front of you and push that button all day long until they, they're, it's like a Pavlovian reaction. They know you're the dog and they're pushing the button and they're going to get what they want. So you've got to, you know, be the boss. What do you think about the wine of watermelon or cantaloupe? It's still going to be sugary. I mean, it's not going to be sugary to us, but to a rabbit. Is a carrot sugary to you? Not very much, but peas and carrots are all too sugary for rabbits. And I... You know, people, again, I see them give a whole carrot. Okay, so you give a carrot to your bunny. One baby carrot, not a whole dog on carrot. I mean, this guy is five pounds. That little carrot is like us eating a big old bowl of ice cream. So 
you know, you, you've got to think in terms of relative weight of the critter and, and a five pound rod of, you know, a whole carrot is like a, that, I tell people that's like a week's worth of carrot for a rabbit if you're getting carrot. Mm -hmm. I don't give those things, because again, that sugar and you want uh, healthier treats are going to make it much better for you. Now I'm going to show you a few things. This is an example of a healthy treat. Timothy Hay Cubes. You buy them in this uh, Petro, about five bucks. They break down into little pieces. I train my bunnies to these. Instead of fruit, this is what they expect as a treat. It, you've got to work with them. This is what they expect now. When they wanted fruit, they were going to take this. But if this is all they're going to get, they'll take it. And they love it. And this is good for them. And you don't have to worry. There are, there, it's basically Timothy Hay uh, with a little binders in it. But the difference is, the reason why pellets are not good and these are okay, is look at the difference. This has hay in it. You can see the whole hay inside. Okay? Uh, when you take this hay and you grind it to a powder, and then you form the pellets out of it, there's no fiber anymore when you powderize something. The fiber quality is gone. So that's why, that's the difference between these and rabbit pellets. These have fiber, rabbit pellets do not. This is still a dense nutrition. I would not give the whole bag to my rabbit. I mean, they, they might get like two or three of these, you know, each day. And it's, again, you, you, everything in moderation in practice. Yeah. Um, you were saying earlier that um, you were getting hay and then selling them in boxes. Right. Are you still doing that? And yes, uh, the House Writing Society does that. The, the, uh, my team here has really, actually the best hay I've seen. Anywhere in the county right now is in my teeth. I don't know where you guys are getting that stuff, but that is some good looking hay. There is a hay problem going on right now across the western United States, actually the whole United States. With the weather that we've been having, you can only expect the hay quality in the next six months to go down and the prices to go way up. We've had to change hay suppliers with the House Health Society because we can't get the hay we were getting. And what we are getting is it's got brown leaf in it, it's not real fresh looking. And so, this, but this is typical of hay. Hay is a crop, and we have crop feathers, and we have variation from year to year. This is why we don't, we try and not get our bunnies hooked on one particular kind of hay. I give my bunnies four or five different kinds of hay every month, and I'm always changing it up so that if, if you've got a bunny that's used to one kind of hay and the crop fails, and all of a sudden that hay is not available, he goes on a hunger strike because he only wants that hay. You know, you're in trouble. And so I changed that up. If my buddy doesn't like the kind of hay, okay, fine, I will find something else. But I'll keep different hays around for him. And it, it makes it easier for me to uh, uh, change him up on hay. But healthy treats, this is a healthy treat. This is basically uh, dried flowers and leaves. This is a healthy treat for a rabbit. A pinch each day uh, is not going to hurt them, but as opposed to fruit. See what I'm saying? You can search out. My bunnies are getting excited about a sprig of cilantro or parsley. You can make that a treat. You know, it doesn't have to be. It's humans that think of treats as cookies and candy and cake and, 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 and sweet things. That's us. Rabbits don't necessarily think of treats as having to be sweet. It's us that put and plant that in there. So don't you know put our human thoughts into his head. He's gonna go for whatever's there and Trust me, if you give them healthy alternatives, they're going to love it just as much as they would the fruit. They really love it. Okay, I want to get a little break for us here. Uh, oh, something I do want to talk about is treats at pet stores. Just about everything you see as a treat for your money in a pet or pet smart is bad for your rabbit. They sell it, it's not good. Yogurt drops, all of those bird things with peanuts and seeds and corn and beans, gourmet pellets. That's the new big thing now in the stores is they sell these gourmet pellets and they got corn and seeds and all. That's the worst thing. Now you're taking something that's bad pellets and making it 10 times worse by putting more garbage in it. I, 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 and people think they're doing their rabbit a favor. Oh, I love my bunny. I'm going to go buy them the high end stuff. You're, you maybe think you're loving your bunny, but you're giving them the worst stuff you could possibly give. Um, I prefer pineapple once in a while to loosen up hair. Papaya. 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 That's a myth. That's a myth. 
Papaya doesn't work on rabbits. Papaya only works on humans. Papaya is a, has enzymes in it called papain that uh, uh, aids in human digestion. So again, it's counterintuitive to think of all of it works on humans, it works on rabbits. Actually, you know what works on rabbits? I'm going to tell you a little secret. It's pumpkin. Okay? Canned pumpkin with no sugar, no added sugar. Papaya is a myth. People out there, they buy these dried papaya, uh, dried fruit, and they give it to the rabbit. They think they're doing them a favor. It's bad, bad, bad. Papaya is as actually a myth. And I, and I, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of house rental society people who swear by papaya, and they sell it in the stores, and, and they swear by it. It's the rabbit. The enzymes inside a rabbit's gut are nowhere similar to what a meat-eating uh, animal like we would have in our intestines, and so therefore the papaya is not even compatible with their pumpkin. You said it's canned pumpkin, or are they the canned pumpkin. They will eat the raw pumpkin, but it's the canned pumpkin that they use for this. And what uh, some rabbits who have sensitive tummies who need that type of stabilization uh, will get like a teaspoon each day, and it, 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 it's kind of like a probiotic type thing, like like papaya would be for a human. Uh, there is also probiotics. I'm not so sure I've given them. I have given them to my buddy before. I'm not so sure that they work on rabbits. Uh, just because, again, the chemistry inside a rabbit's gut is totally different than on other, other animals. So if it works on other animals, it would make me believe that it probably wouldn't work on a rabbit. Uh, I've tried it just because I have a rabbit who has uh, stomach issues, and I've tried many different things. But I don't recommend it. OK. Uh, one more question little... about food. Pardon? One more question about food. Okay. Um, what do you think about, like, if you get a bouquet of flowers and then they're, you know, done, they're tired, can the bunnies have, like, wilted flowers? Uh, you got to be careful. Some flowers are toxic for rabbits, number one. And number two, most commercial flowers have been sprayed with a lot of pesticides. Rabbits are extremely sensitive to pesticides. Um, Roses in particular are sprayed a lot. And so if you have roses that you've grown in your backyard, I wouldn't hesitate one minute to give them to my buddies. As a matter of fact, we grow them for our rabbit. Rabbits will eat uh, roses, thorns, stems, leaves, and all. They love the pets. They love uh, roses, the, uh, every part of it, the whole plant. If you've got a rose bush and you've got feral domestic rabbits running around in your yard, they will destroy your rose bush. They'll eat it to the dirt. But uh, commercially, uh, stuff that you're buying from a, a, a farm or whatever, it's been sprayed. It's been sprayed a lot. And so you, you, and you don't want your rabbits exposed to that. Uh, going even deeper than that, you want to control exposure to all chemicals uh, with your rabbit. The only safe cleaner around your rabbit is vinegar and water. Uh, all household cleaners are, in general, toxic for rabbits. 409, very toxic. When we clean in our rabbit's area, we use a 50-50 dilution of, of household vinegar and water, white vinegar and water, and you rub it down, it kills germs, it kills smells. If your rabbit pees on anything, the best thing to do is vinegar and water mixture. For one, it will stop staining. Rabbit's urine is extremely caustic. It's like lye. It will melt their own fur. It is very, very alkalized. So you put an acid on it, it will neutralize it. Um, we uh, use that so it'll stop the stain, but it also removes the smell. The only part, bunny poop doesn't smell so much, but the bunny uh, pee is very strong smelling. And so if you get a bunny who misses the box and you don't want the smell hanging around, vinegar and water, five minutes, you'll smell the vinegar for a few minutes, and when the vinegar smell goes away, the pee smell is gone. It's the only cleaner we use around our rabbits. Uh, very important. Uh, Okey I think we're good. We'll come and just come back and go into litter boxes and all. And we'll just take a little break here, uh, like five minutes or so, stretch your legs. <laughs>